we beat us. And the competition doesn't beat us, we beat us. And the more we can focus on that and focus on what we do and try and do it better and differentiate ourselves, um, the better we are. I've, had a, um, I've been here since yesterday. I, I had a, a, a great time last, yes, last night, I guess. I went over to visit one of your stores, a, a Metro Market in downtown Milwaukee. What a neat store. Oh, before I did that, I have to ask a question. And I can barely see you, so I have to ask this question. Shout out if, you, if you're the person. I was at your headquarters um, yesterday afternoon, and there was a really hot looking red sports car with a license plate that said Bag Boy. Whose is that? Man, that's like a recruiting poster. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> what a great little car. I've got this 11 year old Miata. I saw that, I went right to it. I said, oh, that's, such, that's so hot. Anyway, after I did, that, after I did my car shopping, I went and looked at, at, your, at your Metro Market, and what a great store. It was, it, was, uh, it was just fascinating. If somebody is here from that store, yes, I'm the guy who was eating all the salmon croquette little samples that they were handing out. I ate about nine of them because I was hungry. Um, and then I had a chance to walk around downtown Milwaukee, which I really had never done before, which is fascinating. And then I went to the Water Street Brewery for um, beer and sausage. And it was great. I had a fabulous time. Don't tell my wife. She thinks I'm working. We need to start thinking about big ideas. You know, we need to start thinking about the big things can make a that can make a difference to our shoppers and that can create a compelling, differentiated shopping experience in the store. And if we don't start focusing on those big ideas, looking at the big picture, looking at the things that really matter to our customers, we're doomed to irrelevance. And it, you know, it's going to be a slow death. We're not even going to know it's happening. But suddenly they're going to be gone. We have to find ways to be relevant to our consumers. And we can do it in our stores. What's interesting, I was not that long ago, I was at Western Michigan University. And I was moderating a panel on, on um, generational marketing. And there were three executives there, and there were three students there. And we were talking about a lot of different things that made a difference. And one of the questions I asked of the students was, where are you going to work? Because they were all seniors. They were all graduating in about three weeks. Well, two of them had, a, had jobs, one of them was about to get another job, and none of them were going to work for retailers. None of them were interested in working for retailing. Why? I want to be in brand marketing. Why would I want to work for a retailer? And you know, it generated a lot of discussion that day in the session, and it generated a lot of discussion when I wrote about it on a morning news beat. But the thing is, nobody really disagreed with her. Because the fact of the matter is, a lot of retailers whether you're at the, at the corporate level, the headquarters level, or you're at the store level, don't realize what you're doing is you are a brand. And you've got to view it as a brand. You're not just a vehicle for selling other guys' brands. I mean, to a certain extent, that's what you're doing. But you've got to be a brand. You've got to create a unique experience that speaks to the customer in real, compelling ways. And I think there's a really good argument to be said that a lot of retailers don't get it. I've been writing about this industry for a long time now. And it's always interesting because when companies are in trouble, whether they're deep in trouble or just a little bit in trouble, they always say the same things. We're gonna, if we're going to improve ourselves, we're going to turn ourselves around because we're going to have better perishables. And by the way, can we get rid of the word perishables? I like fresh food better. Perishables rot. Fresh food is positive. Am I right? Huh? Fresh food is good for you. Perishables rot. We've got to look on the bright side. We're going to have better perishables, higher levels of customer service, expanded product selection, and one-stop shopping. Like, that's going to solve all their problems. Well, it's the fact that they weren't even doing those things to begin with certainly got them into trouble. But even if you're just doing those things, that's the price of admission. It's the stuff you do above and beyond that that really makes a difference to the customer. That says to the customer, oh, hey, that's a special place to go shopping. That's the price of admission. That's no big deal anymore. Everybody does that. Tom Peters once said that if you don't like change, you're really going to hate irrelevance. And he's absolutely right. Most of you probably know who Emeril Lagasse is. I put those up here because he's starting to do something more and more. He's sp starting to talk to kids. And this is a wonderful thing he's doing, starting to talk to kids about food. You know, we have this fast food McDonald's generation that doesn't really get food. 
And he sort of is coning in on that and starting to talk to them about it, explain things to them, starting to try and make cooking fun. And he's not the only one. Rick Bayless from Frontera Grill down in Chicago is doing sort of the same things. This is really important. Uh, Price Chopper, upstate New York. It so happens that Rachel Ray of the, of the TV Food Network started at Price Chopper as a, as a, as a sampler. Now she's got TV shows, she's got cookbooks, she is still their spokesman. What's she doing? 30 minute meals for kids. Teaching kids how to get comfortable in the kitchen. Also important for us to do if, our, if we're gonna still cater to this customer base in five or 10 years time. It's another example of marketing to kids and why it's important. So there's a, a, a small restaurant, a couple of restaurants in New York called um, Ozone. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to create a differentiated food experience that would appeal to both kids and family. They didn't want it to be, they wanted it to be better than McDonald's. They didn't want it to be like Whole Foods, Wild Oats, but they said, hey, listen, we want to have better for you products in a great atmosphere. So they hired a marketing company called Geppetto, which is a great name for a company that wants to deal with kids. And what, you know, Geppetto did a lot of interesting work for them. And they said, you know, there's eight kinds of fun. And there's six species of kids and nine principles of family branding and seven faces of mom. I have a problem with this last one. I've been married for 22 years. I think seven is really low. <laughs> Sometimes we make seven by noon. But <laughs> I can say this. She's back in Connecticut. But anyway, this is what they did. I mean, this is really interesting work in terms of marketing to children. Okay? It's a huge opportunity. But most supermarkets define marketing to kids as putting toys across from the cereal, cereal or the cookies. That's it. Forgetting about that this is a great, these are, these are the people very often who define the shopping experience, who tell their parents want to go, where, where they want to go shopping based on what it's like. Kids are great nags. We want them to nag for us. But to do it, you've got to think different. You've got to act different. You've got to be different because compete as I love to say, compete is a verb. And it's, a, it's, it's an action word that we have to act on. Can't expect other people to do it for us. Give you a great example. I was once down, I was down in Bentonville, Arkansas, when they were opening a, what was then one of the newer Walmart neighborhood markets, you know, these little supermarkets that they're, they have not rolled out as fast as I would have thought that they would have. And, you know, it was the opening day, and there were tons of suits out there, and the parking lot was crowded, and there were balloons everywhere. They weren't expensive suits, but... <laughs> and um, it was interesting, and it was busy, and it was just as you expect it to be. And I, there was a supermarket across the street, an Arkansas retailer. I said, well, I wonder what's going on over there. Well, the, their parking lot was not crowded. There was my car, and that was about it. And you walk into this, the supermarket, and man, you could have, you know, the old story about you could have rolled bowling balls down the aisles, and you wouldn't hit anybody or anything. It was empty. But you know what was interesting about it? It was about 11.30, quarter of 12. And this store happened to have a deal with the local barbecue shop. They were the, the sole, sole place, other than the barbecue shop, where they sold barbecue. Place smelled unbelievably great because that barbecue was cooking and that sauce was there and all. You walked in the front door and you got hungry. It was just like this enormous pit of barbecue. And I thought to myself, man, they missed a great opportunity. Because on the opening day of the Walmart super uh, neighborhood market, they should have moved that barbecue pit out into the parking lot. So that everybody getting out of their cars over at the Walmart, the first thing they do is go, that smells good. Wonder where that's coming from. And they would have gone across the street. That's what I mean by compete as a verb. That's the kind of stuff we've got to do if we're going to be effective in this environment.